What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, it is Taco Tuesday, and I hope all your taco dreams come true. Um, we are here, of course, at Joe Boo Sports Report, where the news just seems to be... Um, just happening like crazy this morning. Unfortunately, we found out about Michael Irvin's uh, wife who has all, Alzheimer's, okay? Um, unfortunately, 58 years old and has been um, in dealing with this for the last five or six years and tragically um, has to have 24-hour care. They have a live-in caretaker uh, for her and things. So our prayers are with Michael Irvin and his family. Um, then, of course... Uh, we talked about on my morning video, um, the Cowboys have kind of lost a little bit more leverage uh, with Trey Lance not performing as well as everybody has hyped up. And you look at this and say, you know, and it wasn't just my words, just going through. And you, if you watch the video, you'll see on there. And then, of course, the Cowboys having now signed Willie. Oh, my goodness. Let me see. Do I have Willie? Willie Harvey's. Okay, here. Here's a, a little a little quick hitter of Willie. Um, let's go back some here. Okay, it's not playing for me. Okay, look. Okay, so there you go. There's one of the Battle Hawks. Okay, one of the Battle Hawks uh, highlights. I don't know why it's freezing. Okay. Okay. He is all UFL, okay, all UFL, Willie, 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 Willie Harvey Jr., um, linebacker originally drafted by the Cleveland Browns, uh, didn't work out for him, uh, was kind of floated around, he's five foot eleven, a little bit short for linebacker, but 230 pounds, he's explosive, he's a hitter, and he's a guy who will now be in the Cowboys rotation. Now, uh, the funny thing with the Cowboys is when the Cowboys sign guys, for the most part, people are always like, ho-hum. So that, that's, that's the best we're going to do. That's the best we're going to do. You know, we hiring bums. But, you know, the funny thing about the Cowboys is they bring in a lot of guys that end up playing a lot better than what people think that they were going to do. I can think of a guy like George Selvey from, you know, 2013 or so uh, who came in, who was a journeyman defensive end who gets six and a half sacks and gets a big fat contract. You can look at a guy like Malik Hooker where people were looking at him and saying, yeah, well, he's ruptured his Achilles and things like that. And, and that's when one of the best free agent pickups in football. He's had staying power with the Cowboys. He's still there making plays at a reasonable price as opposed to seeing some of these big name free agents and such. And so sometimes it's those guys that are in the bargain basement bench that make your team. And I'm going to remind you of something here that I find um, uh, very interesting, at least in my mind, is the Jimmy Johnson philosophy. And maybe this is the Jimmy Johnson philosophy being put in work because see, we all think about the Herschel Walker trade that ended up bringing in, you know, all the draft picks and all the players. Mind you, I don't believe any of the players that we traded for in that trade actually did much for the Dallas Cowboys. It was actually the draft picks. But here's the thing with Jimmy Johnson was they were like a conveyor belt of bringing in players and finding ones that stick. Maybe you bring in five guys and you only get one good one. But if you get one good one, I don't care how many guys you bring in. Get me those good ones <coughs> Excuse me, that make that roster. And let me, okay, so yes, I'm tooting my own horn here. Okay, I'm tooting my own horn right here. Because this was me talking to Jimmy Johnson before he was going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And he explains that exact same thing. And maybe the Cowboys are going to start doing that. Now, I wish they would do the other part that they used to do, which was also bringing in some ringers like, Deion Sanders and Charles Haley, which I don't think is going to happen. But listen into this. You're up, and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, 
I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> right, Mark. But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and fur- thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great, you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry is one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach. And he he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuanay at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous staff, staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third round pick, a 245 pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved St- uh, Stepnoski to center. And then we took a seventh round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third round pick, Eric Williams at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much for that. I'll follow up you about Charles Haley. Yes, he's a character. <laughs> he's he is a, a character, character but he is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few uh, rocky roads uh, there early in his career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we we really got together. You know, really, he came into my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games. And he said, Coach, he said, if you will just get on to me one-on-one in your office, he said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship. And he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much. And how about them Cowboys? (laughs) I should have trademarked that. <laughs> James Harris. So the lesson there is it's not always the, the first round draft picks and all the big name guys that come in. This is also about finding pieces that work. Did you hear any number one picks on that offensive line? Fignowski was a guard that converted to center. Tune was a defensive tackle. You had... Uh, Nate Newton, who was let go because he was too fat by the commanders. And they coached them up along with bringing in guys that had a little bit of an edge to them. You know, um, when you think about people talking about Micah Parsons being a diva or CeeDee Lamb being a diva and things like that, a good coach figures out how to get the most out of them and make them function in your system. And that's the lesson that you learn right there. So it may be that it ends up being that a guy like Willie ends up being a great player for you, much the way Malik Hooker did. We've actually done well with UFL guys. So we'll see. 
All right, good people, this has been a crazy morning. I'm still uploading my morning video, and the news is just breaking. And I, I haven't even gotten to Pat McAfee's show that I missed three weeks ago where they're talking about doing away with the sideline chains. Chains gonna come. Cha chains, chains, no, chains, go chains are gonna go. That's what it sounds like. All right, people, we'll catch you later on. Peace out.